Hey everybody, I know this is like a completely different scenery while well, I'm actually in the hubby's man cave because I didn't feel like going downstairs and recording and I couldn't record in my room because my husband, not my husband, my son was watching TV in there and had the TV too loud for me to do it and I didn't want to turn it down and him get all... I'm watching that mom so I figured I would just come in here real quick and record. This is going to be 25 things they don't tell you about being a military wife. And I got this list mostly from this website called militarywifeandmom.com. I will try to figure out how to put the link below in the description box for you. But let's just, I wrote them all down. So let's just go ahead and get started with the list. So the first one is, the first appointment is a brutal shock. Like you have no clue what to do. You don't know what's going to happen. You just, it's a complete shock for you. And it's totally different being, like if you don't have kids, being by yourself, you know, far away from family and everything. And if you do have kids, having to take care of them by yourself. Number two, each deployment or separation will turn you into a bag of nerves. No matter where they go, no matter what they do, you're always going to be wondering if they're okay, if everything's alright, you're just nerves, you are on edge. Number three, deployments don't get easier, but you learn to cope with them. Number four. You will spend the whole time at your current duty station wondering where you're going to be next. Luckily, we've been here at our duty station for three going on four years now. So I'm hoping we get to stay here once he gets back. But you just never know. Number five. When someone asks you for your address history, you will go crazy thinking about all of them, especially if you've moved a ton. Luckily me, I had, you know, I moved from home to here, so I don't have too many, you know, addresses, but still. Your, your ID card becomes your life. Your military ID card, you need it for almost everything. You need it for shopping at the commissary, for shopping at the little PX store, you know, especially if you want to get cigarettes or if you want to get alcohol, you have to have it with you. Getting getting a citation for not taking care of your yard is number seven. If you don't take care of your yard, like we had fences put up like a year after we moved out here and they started saying you have to take care of your yard by yourself. Luckily at the housing office, they do have lawn mowers and um, weed whackers you can use so you're able to take care of your yard but if you don't you get a citation if you do some duty stations will feel like the worst place ever then you meet a friend either they are leaving or you are leaving so it's really hard to make friends you know you can make friends but sometimes it just so happens like me, I had my neighbor who was like my best friend that I could have out here and she ended up moving to Hawaii, so that was a little sad. Getting your taxes done alone is the scariest thing ever. I just recently did it by myself and it's so nerve-wracking, like you don't know what to take, what to bring, you don't know what they're going to say or anything, so it's it's scary you will travel crazy amount number 10 you will travel crazy amount of miles to see a family and friends and that is very true we travel about 13 hours just to get home and it usually takes about 12 but it takes us 13 hours because we have kids and dogs so we have to stop and pee breaks all the time you spend your majority of your time as a spouse unemployed. It's really hard to get a job, especially if you don't know if you're staying here or not. 
Homecoming will feel like you're falling in love all over again. <clears throat> Sometimes you will break something will break down during the plant at any point. Like any point, like anything. Like my last appointment with my husband, his car decided to break down on me. So that was fun. That was 13. 14. At some point, you will feel alone and wonder what you're doing with your life. I don't ever feel that way, but then again, there I have kids and the dogs that keep me preoccupied. You know, I guess I could say maybe once or twice, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? But then I have him, and he's with the love of my life, so I wouldn't change it. Military life will take you to the highest of highs and the lowest of lows in motions. So true. Like like I said for number 12, homecoming, falling in love all over again. Like the highest point ever. Being able to see them again is like beyond perfect, I would say. Like seeing them, after seeing them for like six months or however long the deployment is, and then you have the lowest of lows where they do have to go on deployments and you don't want them to, but they have to go. You, your ability to handle tough situations will become stronger. Like you'd be able to take care of the broken car that breaks down on you. Or you'd be able to take care of the builds when you accidentally skip payment or something, you know? Attending the military, number 17, attending the military ball will feel like prom. I haven't yet been to a military ball yet, but I heard they are just like absolutely best, the, like the best party that the military can throw. Number 18, trying to explain military, being a military wife to a civilian and they won't get it. They won't understand why you're doing it, I guess, is what it's trying to say. But to me, I'm just like, it's he's the love of my life. Why would I want to be with him? Number 19, finding an outfit for homecoming will take forever. I've only had one real, like, homecoming, you know, that he came to and I had no clue I went through like three different outfits that I wanted to wear just choose you know the one the basic one because you know seeing him was more important than what I was wearing military gear gear will take over your house believe me I don't know how many times I find gear downstairs that I have to bring up in here to his man cave around the house and I just it does it takes over your house it's just crazy how amount of gear they have 21 your heart will feel overwhelmed a sense of pride when someone tells you thank you for your services and your sacrifices when someone tells me that, I do get overwhelmed and I'm like, you know, thank you for kind of understanding the sacrifices, especially we have to go through as military spouses and wives and your girlfriends um, being a part of it. So, yes, I do get overwhelmed. Friendship doesn't describe the relationship you have with other spouses. Like I said... You know, with my best friend who moved to Hawaii, like, I have, I do have a best friend, you know, back home and whatnot, but we weren't as close as me and my friend who lived next door, the neighbor, because she didn't exactly know what was going on, or if I would tell her something that was going on, she wouldn't understand, and my neighbor did, so, yes. Number 23, taking calls at 3 a.m. from around the world feels normal. Right now, yes, it feels definitely normal for me because I don't know when he's going to call. And if it's 3 a.m., it's 3 a.m., it doesn't matter as long as I get to talk to him. 24, 
Hearing gunshots and bombs go off won't phase you. I used to live in the South Valley before I moved out here, and that was a pretty, not scary place, but back then when I was younger, there was a lot of drive-bys, so guns didn't phase me, it doesn't phase me now, it phases the kids a little bit, but it's true, it doesn't phase. It, 25, last one, it's a challenge, it's a challenge you make and you want to quit, but in the end, you're glad you did it. It has been a challenge since we've been together, you know, with him going to the field and deployments and me being alone. I've never really been alone. I always had family here that I can run to. Well, not here, but back home that I could run to, you know, especially if I needed a babysitter or something. And it's hard now, you know, I do have friends that are able to watch the kids for me. But what am I going to do when I'm by myself? Um, but I am glad that I met him and that we're together. And him being in the military is just part of life. So there you go. 25 facts that they do not tell you about being a military wife. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button on the bottom. And don't forget to hit that little bell if you want to see more videos for notifications.